Hi, I'm Dr. Gemma, and welcome back to Cognitive, the Knitting Psychology Podcast. Cheerfully and somewhat irregularly in business since 2008. Segments today may include what's on my hooks, needles, and spindles, a strategy, something I really like, put a lid on it, oh shoot, and blather. So sit back, put your feet up, pick up your knitting, crocheting, spinning, weaving, or dyeing, (laughs) or any other yarny thing you're doing, and get ready to enjoy. Well, hello everybody, and welcome back to Cognitive. Here we are at episode 93, and I'm your host, Dr. Gemma, and it is an incredibly hot Monday afternoon, August 29th, 2022, and I am here to belatedly wish you a happy International Dog Day. You can go to where our show notes live, either on our blog page at cognitivepodcast.blogspot.com or our group on Ravelry. And if you go there and look at the show notes for episode 93, you will see some pictures of my doggy dog dogs. Of course, the two puppy girls, Captain, the three quarters Noof, one quarter Border Collie, and Queenie, the 100% I own the world, I am a cat in a dog suit, Rough Collie, as well as one of our gone but deeply lamented Eleanor and her best pal Blankets, who's still with us. You can see their pictures in a nice little collage there because everybody should celebrate dogs because dogs are cool. (laughs) And I love your comments, which reminds me to thank Knitting in the Shaw for that, for her latest comment. So please feel free to comment in either place. It will eventually catch up with me. Also, warm thanks to the Knitmores, who this week have made clear the threat that we all knew Roombas really are, our household androids. If they rebel, you're going to wake up with tracks all over your face, but no lint on your clothing. Thanks, girls, for the warning. COVID, well, how's your vaccine status? Everybody got their vaccines, everybody getting their boosters, everybody standing six feet apart. All those good things, remember, wash your hands, wear your mask in crowds. Remember, there are people among us who are immunocompromised. There are kids among us who cannot tolerate the shots for one reason or another. Please remember that as we deal with what hopefully are the later stages of this pandemic, it's not about you being safe, it's about us keeping each other safe. Let's remember this is a community effort. This is not about your rights, your individuality, how you hate the state. (laughs) It's not about any of those things. It's about, look, over a hundred million of us have the shots. I think we can pretty well show that that experiment is over, but we're still trying to protect the people who can't get the shot, who are disabled, who are sick. Okay. Let's try to keep ourselves grounded in the reality that we all do better when we survive as a community. Okay, having said that, wow, looks like we're going to get rid of those free COVID tests because the funding is running out. Okay, but I've got like 16 of them around the house. So thanks, President Joe. Meanwhile, what's on my hooks and needles? Haven't finished a thing because I'm working my butt off in other ways. However, I make sure I get in four or eight rows every day on the lane splitter skirt. You can see a picture of me trying it on. No, I'm not. I'm just wrapping the longest edge around my hips to get a sense of what it'll look like. The answer is not like that picture because I'm wearing a long skirt under it. I'm not at all dressed the way I would be dressed to wear it. But you know, there's that moment where you just hang it against yourself and say, how long is this thing going to be? If you could tell it's past my knees, it's going to be very long. I'm actually okay with that because I have two sets of colors that I could be using on this. This is my least favorite set, and so I thought this is going to be the try-on model. Now, you're saying, if you have any sense at all, you're saying, Hey, Gemma, why didn't you just measure yourself? The answer is because a skirt goes over different territory. And the front territory is somewhat shorter in length than the back territory, 
because I am gifted with a wonderful seat to sit upon. So I just said, all right, I'm going to go with the length that goes with my hip size and maybe a little more. I think I might have added a little more and then work on this. And so I'm pretty happy. I'm pretty happy with what I'm getting. It's really an interesting looking skirt. If you go to Ravelry and you look up the lane, as in lane of a road splitter skirt, you're going to see a lot of people looking really good in these babies. So I'm very pleased about that. In the meantime, that don't know yet, well, on my birthday, which in case you're wondering is September 4th, it is coming up day before Labor Day. As it so happened when I was born, my mother was in labor on Labor Day. There is just a perfection to that. I'd like to formally apologize at this point. It's taken me 62 years, but I'm going to do it to my mother because we were twins and she had 36 hours of labor. I had something similar and I'd like to officially set the record straight. Sorry, mom. <laughs> Sometimes I have gloated about it, but really right now, really sorry about that, mom. The varicose veins, the hemorrhoids, mm, sorry. But here I am, 62 glorious years later, celebrating my birthday. And it's been a great ride and I'm loving it. Although it's weird because you get in your 60s and you realize, hmm, maybe I am getting old. I didn't know that was possible for me kind of pleased I've had this option. Yeah, also my 62nd birthday was two major medical conferences that admitted that you could put diabetes into remission so that the patient doesn't need medications. And then one of them peed all over keto. Well, you're halfway there, guys. Hang in there. You'll figure it out yet. Yeah, well, I don't, here I am celebrating my birthday and yet I must roll backwards. Do I have 250 blocks yet? I'm pretty sure I'm at the 250 mark. Should I count my blocks? You bet I should. At this point, the yarn is getting closer to the bottom. I can't tell if I actually have enough to make the 361 blocks I'd like to make, but I'll be okay with 18 blocks squared or with 19 by 18. I mean, we've reached the moment where I really am needing to just pull all the blocks out and lay them out on the ground and look at the dimensions and count them and arrange them a little bit. So of course I won't be doing that anytime soon, but that's what I should be doing. In case you were wondering, October 25th will be 300 blocks. My guess is I'm going to get about there and then start counting. All right, nevertheless, what else am I doing? I'm not doing anything on the Pennsylvania Dutch embroidery or the Bright Cherries brick. The collie scarf that I made a few weeks ago did sell at auction for $50. People weren't that enthused about it. I think whenever you do duplicate stitching, you have a problem you always have when you show embroidery to non-embroiderers, where they don't get it is more impressionist than photographic. But it was nice. I sold it. A newbie got it. Apparently she really liked it. I've seen the video. It, it was a relief. Uh, the Midsummer Socks, I am past the heel of the first sock, working my way down the toe. Haven't given them much love this week. The same with the wrapped in tiny chains cardigan. I am moseying along on one of the front panels. These are not big. The back felt huge, but this is a very long cardigan and I'm, as always, making it too big for myself. I don't know why I always knit to oversized. I think it's because I haven't really accepted that I'm not as oversized as I used to be. However, this is a great scrappy cardigan. A lot of people have been posting it on La 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 Facebook. The designer has a group called Crochet Done Right. I was a little concerned that meant Done Right Wing, I'll be honest, but it doesn't seem to have. But not a lot of people on Crochet Done Right are bothering to keep up their Ravelry cues. And again, I thought, oh, if this is a political thing, I'm right out of there. But it doesn't seem to be as far as I can tell. I think that brings up a problem for me as a crocheter that a lot of crocheters are not using Ravelry. That I have a slight concern that people who come to crochet before they come to knitting aren't using Ravelry. I think if you start with knitting you're going to find out about Ravelry and then you're going to start mounting your crochet projects. But I notice a lot less contribution on the crochet side. Also, my LYS, which is quite a distance away, is now offering a Tunisian crochet class on Saturdays. Ma, I hate that. I love working on Saturdays and having Mondays off because everybody hates Monday and I've been freed from that burden. 
And also it means on Monday I have an excuse to ignore all the work emails and everything else. It's my day off. And also to be honest, when I need a head start on the week, I can do some of my work on Monday. So there we go. At any rate, this brings back the truth that I will not be taking Saturdays off anytime soon. But the Altered Stitch does have some good classes if you're in the LA area. They've been doing a great job. Also, they are bringing in Threadbare Yarns, some kits to do an adorable Halloween cow. Ah! Meanwhile, I'll just kick myself and cry over here in the corner and go back to work. But the Wrapped in Tiny Chains cardigan, a lot of people are doing it with yarn scraps. I'm not quite sure how that works. The thing I don't like about crochet is weaving in ends. Every time I do it, they kind of work themselves loose it's not as secure as it tends to be in knitting because knitted stitches are usually kind of tighter and more collapsed for that purpose. So, you know, your mileage may vary, but I'm back at, I wish there were more crocheters on Ravelry. Ravelry is still loaded with crochet patterns for free. And if you want to see this crochet in action, you have to go to the Facebook group Crochet Done Right. Okie dokie, my favorite resources, you know them. I've been adding to them gradually. Lisa, Souza, Yarns, and Webs top my list. But this week I added Dizzy Blonde Studios because she's a friend and she does great yarn. And I don't know why it wasn't on that list in the beginning. My apologies. It's there now. I also have Sierra Cottons and Wools and Wool and Company because I still feel a personal sense of debt to them for popping up with that skein of Mecha that I needed to finish my most recent hat, and selling it to me at a discount. I am not spinning this week, so let's move along into the strategy. Well, you know I've been doing emotional management strategies forever and a day now, and I thought I should give you the great acronym of emotional management. I'm not going to linger too much on this because you already know this. Now, as a practitioner myself, I use the simple four-point logic, eat, sleep, move, focus. Those are the big four. However, my teacher, my trainer, Marshall Linehan, gave us the acronym PLEASED, as in pleased to meet you, because Dr. Linehan is really huge on the acronyms. I find it a little clunky, I'll be honest, but if you're teaching a group, this is a great thing to know. So it is P for physical health. Keep your physical health maintained. It is amazing. How many people expect to have really good mental health when they're not taking care of their physical health? Trust me. Also, you need to know, if you see a person like me, we are required to rule out physical health issues when we're looking at mental health. That is pretty tricky when we are not medical doctors. Let me tell you something. And we are not qualified to pretend we are. So in case you're wondering, in my master's, they didn't teach me anything about this. I really feel badly about that. I, there have to be better master's degrees, though, than the one I got, I'll be honest. But in my doctorate, they just taught us a handful of things you need to know. Middle-aged woman walks into your office. She's overdressed for the weather. That means she's cold. She says, I've really been depressed and I'm putting on weight. You really want her to get her thyroid checked by her doctor before you start telling her this is about her mental health. Those are actually symptoms of hypo, that is, too little thyroidism, okay? So we do look at that stuff. I have sent kids to the dentist when I treated kids full time. I would have kids who were hiding dental problems from their families. And I would just say point blank, and I was trained to do this by DMH, but they later, I don't think they were enforcing the policy, but this is a great policy if you treat kids. You say, you have to show me that you've been to a dentist in the last six months. Because kids don't know to ask for that kind of help. Adults don't tend to think of it that often because they're just routinely maintaining their teeth. The point here is your physical matters and it affects your mental health. Okay, the L is list your resources. I know it's a little clunky. That's why I don't like this acronym as much. List your resources is you should have a developed phone list for everything that will help you with the rest of these things, web list for websites that help you, okay? So every family should have on the refrigerator the phone number 911, 
the phone number of their local ER, the phone number of poison control, the phone number of a suicide hotline. Don't ask questions. If your kids want to use it, you should make it available to them. Sure, your kid is melodramatic and they're not really suicidal. If that's what you're thinking, please don't take that chance. Trust me. Okay, so you should have the numbers of neighbors you can trust to call in an emergency, who to call if mom and dad aren't there. You should have resources at your fingertips for your whole family. The other thing is you should have the listings in your contacts of your doctors, of your health care. You should have the apps. You should have everything ready to go in case you need help. All right. But also, I would say, because I care about diet and I love good keto recipes, I also have a list of websites for keto, websites or YouTube sites that I happen to trust, doctors that I like to listen to. When I have those days where I just need pasta, I listen to Jason Fung and Ken Berry. Tell me why that will kill me. <laughs> Remember, I'm diabetic, okay? Your mileage may vary. So the point is, you should gather your self-care resources. The name of your favorite massage place, the name of your local hot tub place, or your local uh, soak in salt water place, should you be so blessed, okay? But you should have those resources around. Also, I'm just saying, you know, birthdays, if, if my husband didn't have to search for my favorite massage therapist's phone number, well, that would sure make birthday presents more subtle. Okay. The E of pleased is obviously going to be eat in a balanced way. The A is avoid drugs and alcohol. The pandemic didn't help us with drinking. I mean, I got used to seeing everybody mount their favorite cocktails now that they were staying at home. And again, I don't drink, I never really have, but also I'm diabetic, all alcohol, all fermentation takes place in the presence of sugar. So, you know, that's a smoking gun if you're diabetic. However, don't overdo, really, don't overdo. And I'm not going to go any further on that. I'm not a substance counselor, although I certainly get my chance every week. The S of pleased is to sleep reasonably. And we've done sleep hygiene before that you're an adult, you need eight hours. You're not quite 21, you probably need nine or 10. You're younger than 10, even more. Have you ever seen a newborn sleep? You could blow the house up. When my kid was a toddler, even to right now, his alarm goes off four times every morning because he sometimes it just turns itself off and it restarts, he doesn't even wake up. Yeah, kids sleep like the dead. You need to sleep. Every mental health problem has sleep issues associated with it. That right there should tell you. If you're not sleeping, your mental health is going to go. Okay, the E. Is that a second E? It is. Oh, yes. The second E is exercise in a balanced way. Exercise suitably for your age, your ability level, your training, your background, your safety. Not necessarily in that order. No, you don't go running if you live in a dangerous neighborhood unless you can do it at a gym. That's what I'm saying. Or you can find a safe place. You do have to exercise safely. Many of us have good opportunities for in-home machinery. If you're not in that kind of space, yeah, you're going to need a gym and gym's a little more risky. So you have to think about all these things. Please don't overdo it. That leads to not exercising. People who say, okay, I'm going to start a program today and I'm going to run five miles. You might the first day but you won't after that. So please, when you're looking at movement, remember where you are, remember to build up. There are so many good exercise programs on YouTube. There are apps to get you running or biking or whatever, but you do need to exercise. Just saw a whole bunch of new studies that walking and biking and swimming extend your life. I'm sorry, did somebody not know that? All right, meanwhile, the D of pleased is daily. You have to do self-care daily. It's not a once a week thing, although if you're me, those long peaceful Sunday morning runs only happen on long peaceful Sunday mornings. Nevertheless, you have to take care of yourself daily. These are daily skills. They are not when you feel like it's skills. They are not, I have a good excuse because I'm something or other skills. And that's not really what's going on there. These are daily skills. You just need to pick a time and make it a habit if you want to do it your whole life. I am here to tell you I'm grateful I did. I started running when I was 10. I got kind of committed in high school, in college, when I realized that my periods were agonizing. 
I became very committed and it solved more problems than I can tell you. My doctor is convinced that's why I didn't die in childbirth, in fact. You cannot predict, but you should certainly enjoy the fact that routine exercise is going to help you again and again and again in your life. Okie dokie. So there you go. That is the PLEASED acronym. Fluffy books. Yay, I'm reading Introduction to American Deaf Culture again. However, I found out when I started my ASL class last week, I've pretty much internalized it anyway. That made me really happy. I recognized a lot of the games being played in the class and some new ones from some of the students that I find mildly amusing. But I have to say, it's a worthwhile book. I do recommend it. This is Professor Thomas Holcomb, Introduction to American Deaf Culture. The Finishing School series, I'm listening to that on Audible. I'm on the fourth book, Manners and Mutiny. It's a lot of fun. I didn't like it the first time. I really quite like it now. She-Hulk on Disney, yes. Episode two, did watch it. It is about the kinds of negotiations that successful career women are forced to make. Now, I grant you, I think they play her a little dumb and a little desperate for who she is and what she does. But the core issue of the episode is, I don't want to be a superhero. I want to maintain the career that is meaningful to me. But once people know who you are, you can be manipulated. And so there's a question, did you only hire me to do X? Hello, women face it all the time. Don't kid yourself. So it's a good episode. It's a very solid, good episode. You know, it has the usual Marvel flaws, but I'm still really grateful that they're even trying to do this. Apparently, there's been a lot of pushback between Captain Marvel, Ms. Marvel, She-Hulk, and Black Widow. And I'm... Okay, can you spell sexism? It just is. It just is. And I'm just, you know, say no more. Like, look, Marvel has taken to exploring the experiences of less well-represented people in their series. And I would remind you that we don't have to agree with everything they say, but it is the mark of maturity to listen to all sides of an argument. I've been really enjoying it. I'll be the first one to tell you I don't like what they've done with Scarlet Witch. I don't like what they did with Black Widow, but I'm starting to like the more normal people. Of course, Captain Marvel, adorable blonde, but still, I'm starting to like the fact that they're talking about more normal people. She-Hulk I really like because while she's kind of sexy and attractive in her own way, she's not. Guys, she's seven feet tall and she's green, okay? That's going to be a little off-putting. In other words, they haven't quite grown up enough to represent the not adorable, not beautiful woman. I'd really like to see a kind of plain looking woman. Anyway, nonetheless, I'm enjoying this, okay? And it's a start. I also started reading The Murder of Mr. Wickham. Thank you. I can't remember who recommended that. It's very clever. In the very beginning, they have to establish everybody's motive for murdering Mr. Wickham. Now, let's be honest, if you've read Pride and Prejudice, you'd like to kill him, so there's millions of us. But in the beginning, I thought, oh no, they're all kind of related. All the major Austin characters have these weird relationships. And then I sort of looked back and said, that's really clever. The author's doing something really clever there. She's creating a fun story. Wickham is Wickham. Uh, what I really like is this author does a very believable plot for the era. It's the early 19th century. But Wickham is basically a 20, 21st century capitalist pig. And I like her even more for that. Because, by the way, what Wickham is doing in the book, the scam he's running, is actually a major plot in Charles Dickens' book, Little Dorrit that scamming people in this way was happening in the 19th century with all the explosive growth in industry and railroad. So it's fun, but I got to tell you, George Wickham is so 21st century. We all just love to hate him. But you know, like it, by chapter two, you're going, somebody just kill him. Come on, let's move on to the murder mystery. Somebody just kill him because you just hate him. And I think we hate him because he's really familiar to us. Okay. 
something I really like. Well, I'm taking the ASL class and it's full immersion and I respect that. And the problem is I'm from an era when we were not taught language that way. Believe it or not, back in the 60s and the 70s when we were taught a new language, we were taught it by being taught the grammatical rules and then trying to fit them to vocabulary. Full immersion has been shown to be a highly effective way to learn language. I am not complaining, but it's really hard for me. So I am recommending an ASL YouTube channel called Learn How to Sign. Now, there are goods and there are bads. This is a hearing person. That makes it easier for me, but also it's easier because she can approach it from my model and she usually does. She's teaching a lot of vocabulary and she goes back and teaches grammatical rules. So, you know, I understand the deaf perspective on this would be you should learn it from a deaf person. I happen to agree with that, but I have to tell you too, this old dog isn't learning the new tricks. However, I also have been using a lot of resources from deaf teachers. But when I break down and I just can't figure out what I'm doing, it's true I'm going back to this hearing teacher. So that's my crutch. I suspect it is more about my age and the way I've been trained than it is about my hearing status because I struggled to learn Spanish and French and German from full immersion as well. That it really does matter your learning paradigm. Having said that, she's pretty good. That learn how to sign, well, it works the way I work. So, you know, the first class is here's what you need to know before you learn to sign about word order. Here's what you need to know about hand position. And also, Here's what you need to know if you're online doing it, the kind of setup you need so that everybody can see your signing. You know, it's a shortcut. Either I was going to read it on a PowerPoint slide or I was going to hear somebody say it. So that's just what that is. Okay. The other thing, I have a near eidetic memory that is near photographic memory for what I hear. And I, I just, sometimes with visuals, I tend to remember... If I look at a book and I'm really focused, I will remember what page a certain fact is on. In rare occasions, I can read the page from memory. And I know these are all my secrets being given away. It's like Batman telling you that he's Bruce Wayne, you know. I'm not as smart as I might sound. In other words, I just have this amazing biological capacity. So it is challenging for me because I'm not as visual as I am aural, A-U-R-A-L. And so, yeah, I have to admit that I engage better as a learner with a hearing person. Nonetheless, what I would tell you, the difference is this. It's great that I'm in a class where we don't talk at all because I have to learn to use my eyes. I have to learn not to depend on my ears. So what am I really doing? I'm taking a shortcut to gain vocabulary based on the style of training I have and the fact that I can hack by using my ears. But I have to admit, I do get and respect the idea that you need to learn any language in a full immersion environment. And that means you're going to learn ASL most effectively from a deaf person. So having said that, I do mention in something I really like, learn how to sign because it's been a good hack for me as a hearing person. I don't know that I'd recommend it as the only way you learn to sign, I guess, if you don't have other options. But full immersion with a deaf teacher is probably going to be the most effective. Okay, put a lid on it. It's been Chaffles Week here around the farm. I have been busy out the wazoo because I'm doing ASL a couple hours a day because I really want to get this. So here we are on Chaffles Week because I don't have dinner. The boys are out a lot because my son is doing track at night. Now, in general, to make a chaffle, one beaten egg to a quarter cup of grated cheese, any cheese you like. I use cheddar, I use parmesan, I use some nameless thing that showed up in my fridge last week that my husband likes, it's very hard. Parmesan. Okay, what does that really mean? To make a basic chaffle, you need a waffle iron. By the way, you can make a pancake out of this just as well. But you need one egg in a bowl beaten up, and then you add the grated cheese, beat it together. Pour that in your waffle iron, wait till the light turns green. However, there are add-ins that reduce the egginess a little bit because I find that's very eggy, even if I use a very sharp cheese. 
So the add-ins I like, I will usually put like a teaspoon of almond flour in it to stiffen it up, and I will sometimes add just a really like a teaspoon at most of heavy cream just to smooth it out a little bit. I like me some chaffles. They are a fast, fast dinner. What you do, plug in your waffle iron, assuming it's electric, then go get your ingredients out of the fridge, beat that egg, mix them together, and by the time you turn around, your waffle iron is hot. What do I serve on them? I like to take a generous tablespoon of full fat sour cream and mix it with about a tablespoon of salsa, mix it thoroughly, and that's my dressing. But you can see me serving it with bacon if you look at those pictures because I am still experimenting with my air fryer and bacon in the air fryer. 10 minutes, turn it in the middle, 400 degrees, crispy, crispy. Less crispy, eight minutes, 400 degrees. I really quite like it. Save that bacon grease. It's great to cook anything else in or to add as a fat when you're cooking in place of some other oil. Okay, I do want to say too, the air fryer, I also tried an experiment where I took a bowl of beaten egg and then a bowl of whole wheat flour mixed with my grated cheese. I took a cod filet, I sliced it into chunks dipped each of those into the egg and let them sit on a plate while I dipped all of them. And then I took them again and shook them up in a Ziploc bag with my cheese and flour mixture. They went into the air fryer. What did I cook them at? 400 and I believe it was eight minutes. Ooh, la la, worked out really nicely, breaded fillets. However, if you're gonna do this, Really wet down your air fryer with olive oil because those babies are going to stick. And they still did, despite the fact I did that. Okie dokie, let's see the blather. ASL class, mixed review. I like it. I like being with other people and practicing. I'm not big on the teacher because her attitude towards learning, basically she said you learn only from me, from nowhere else and does not encourage us to work ahead or explore. I find that kind of soul killing. However, she's certainly competent at ASL. The textbook is good. It's DVDs and a workbook. And yeah, I'm working ahead. I mean, I'm basically using YouTube resources. I do have to give a double thumbs up to the technology. We're using a program called Canvas. I do not know this stuff because when I taught online, none of this had been invented back in the early 90s. But Canvas is this insanely good program. You sign up for it when you join a school and your classes show up on it. And basically it's self-programming. You can always see your homework. You can click off stuff you've finished. It'll take you to quizzes. It'll take you to links to things you need to do. Wow, am I in love with Canvas. I also like the other app we're using, which is Go React, which is a video self-taping app. So the teacher will video herself asking you questions and you get to see that in one block of your screen while you answer them in the other. Allegedly, the app stops when you start answering a question or when a, fin a teacher finishes asking a question. I'm getting mixed results. However, it also will let you upload a video of yourself answering the teacher at the same time. So it's pretty good, but it's a little, go react. It's a pretty good app. It's a little uneven. That may be because I have unpredictable um, internet up here at the farm. All right. So meanwhile, the pup date, Captain Cuddles, I have to tell you this, that Captain is exhausted every day after a long day of managing Queenie her puppy. And I have discovered that at night I will go into my bedroom and we will create Queenie for the night so that she's not running loose, chewing things, killing herself, or peeing on the floors. That's going very well. She's very good about her crate. She is able to stay dry now, it looks like for about six or seven hours. So that's all working well. Well, Captain, meanwhile, is now a grown up. So she has official run of the house, although she can sometimes get herself into trouble, I will admit. And so Captain likes to go and sleep next to my husband. She's fascinated with him. But after I create Queenie, I go into our bedroom and often I will just lie down on the floor because it feels firm on my back. When I do this, Captain comes over, presses her whole body against the length of my body 
and tries to lay her head on my arm if I'm leaning on my arm or have my arm sticking out. And then she leans against me and she groans and she wants to be held and loved. Let me tell you, the dog of my dreams arrives in my arms every night around 10 when I lie on that floor and Captain cuddles with me. Captain is also able to get on our high bed, which Queenie, no, Queenie's not like Eleanor before her. I think rough collies aren't that good pushing off their hind legs. Whereas, believe me, that border collie quarter of Captain is serving her well. But she doesn't want to get on the bed and cuddle me. I think she feels it's kind of unstable. But she will lie next to me for about 10 minutes every night. And then she will get up. I think she's overheating with her big fur coat and walk away. But I have to tell you, sweetest thing on earth, Captain cuddles at night. Meanwhile, the beloved hubs. Yeah, remember his left eye went wonkadoodle? His right eye this week went wonkadoodle. Not as serious. The retina just randomly tore. And, you know, we're worried this is connected to a bigger problem with his blood pressure. So all that's being checked out. But he was heroic. This week on Tuesday, while he was driving my kid to school, he suddenly realized he was losing vision in his right eye. And he just quietly delivered our son to his school and went over to the medical place down in the San Fernando Valley, called them, said, this is what's happening. They said, the surgeon will meet you there. And surgeon did a quick fix and sent him to the eye surgeon he'd been going to previously for his other eye. Eye surgeon said, well, it's not disconnecting from the rest of the eye, that is the retina. But boy, that's a big retinal tear. And just stapled it back in place. His vision is good. He's had a tense week. He's had a tense week. They have reassured him it's just kind of bad luck, but you know, we're looking at the blood pressure issue. So, okay, so he's doing okay, but it's been a little tense. On the calendar, I am going to Stitches, Southern California. I have been told that it's not a masking event. Well, maybe not for the rest of you. <laughs> I fully plan to wear a mask, guys. I'm wearing an N95, so 5% chance I'm going to be fully vaxxed. The rest of you, you want to go to a big spreader event like this with a lot of elderly people and not wear a mask, you go, my friends. But anyway, I will at least be there on November 13th, Sunday. And that's another good reason. I'm going on Sunday because, frankly, far fewer people, far less temptation. And hopefully by that point, more masking. The Grand Canyon is still on in June of 2023. Sunny Bank is tentatively on in August of 2023. I am looking at two days off in September, which may involve going down to Ventura and staying for a night because there's a deaf event down there and I have to attend two of those. And I thought, why not? I've got the days off. I might as well. We'll see how that works out. Meanwhile, Minerva gets the last word. There is a picture of her doing her angel eyes, just looking kind of relaxed. Minerva would like you to know that on Netflix, there's a pretty decent documentary called Inside the Mind of a Cat. When they talk about body language, I'm not sure they're getting that 100% right. Still, Inside the Mind of a Cat, Minerva says, watch it. It's on Netflix. It's absorbing. It's a lot of fun. <sighs> In case you're wondering, I am craving seasonal knitting and crochet. I'm just going to say. I am looking at all the Christmas cowls, the Halloween stuff. I don't know if I have enough sock yarn from this year to do my Franken socks. So that might push me forward onto a different sock project. I don't know if I have any Christmas yarn left either. I don't really want to order more because I'm pretty sure I have a lot of good autumnal colors I could resort to. So we will see how that's going. I am also going crazy downloading crochet bucket hats. And that's it. If you go on Ravelry and you go to Patterns and you type in crochet, or you click the crochet marker, and then you type in the search field, bucket hat. Seriously, adorbs. However, with my spongy fluffy hair, will they stay on my head? I will probably be making a huge bucket hat to keep them on. However, there's some real cuties on there. So just in case you're wondering what am I thinking, I'm looking at that bulky yarn and going, bucket hat? Okay. So, in the meantime, let's not forget our COVID safety. And let's also remember we're coming up on November. Uh, as one person called it, Rovember. I think it's going to be very interesting this year because I think we're going to get the pushback 
whatever direction it goes on Roe versus Wade. So please vote, you know, please pay attention. Please start marking up what you know about the various issues. Please remember there's a lot of deceptive advertising out there as I just learned this week. Please do this carefully and vote as if your life and your kids' lives depend on it. In the meantime, remember all the COVID, it's still out there. People are still dying and people are not immune. People have compromised immune systems. You know, speaking as someone who frequently treats those people, the elderly, the disabled, cancer people. Okay, folks, please remember, six feet distance, wear your mask, wash your hands, keep your vaccines up to date. Most of all, everybody stay safe, take care of each other, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. So we have come to the end of another episode of Cognitive. Please do not use this podcast to diagnose yourself. If you think you are having a mental health problem, please contact a licensed mental health professional. Show notes for these episodes can be found at cognitivepodcast, all one word, dot blogspot.com. Episodes can be found at iTunes under the name Cognitive Podcast, but also can be found posted next to the show notes on the Blogspot page. Thank you so much for listening. Everybody stay safe, take care of each other, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.